So before jumping into 3D code and looking at all the tools, uh, let's see some uh, exporting here in 3ds Max. Mm, there are not much to know about this part, but you know, you just want to make sure that your model is in the center, uh, so you can paint symmetrically the model, and yeah, also like you can explode the model parts of the model like this, so it's easier to paint. We have it named Pistol here, and then the Pip Boy. I separated all of the stuff that I knew I wanted to paint separately from the main character and pulled it uh, above above here. So, yep. Mm. This has the UVs, of course, as we did in the videos earlier. And then you just select all of that, you know, name the material so it's easier to see what it is and then you can hit export use OBJ I think it's uh, it will come in handy if you are if you wanna uh, export multiple materials so use OBJ overwrite the file and these are the presets I use um, basically and that's it our model is ready to be painted in 3D code so let's walk through the tools that I use in 3D code uh, so you guys understand what's happening in the other video uh, import model for per pixel, per pixel painting here uh, let's import the OBJ that ju we just exported hit no center snap because we want our model to be in the middle or just as we exported in 3ds max and there you can change the texture resolution uh, to whatever you want I clicked it really quickly but you can rewind the video uh, so yeah, let's check the tools here quickly. Uh, yep, you have this one here. If you click, then you know it will snap to the middle. Uh, if you wander off into unknown areas, you can come back. Uh, this, if you scale it, then you have a, you know, a bigger or s or smaller field of view. Let's scale it back. Or yep. Um, <coughs> Also, here you can turn on and off the perspective and orthographic view. And here, the paint objects, let's close them down. In Windows, pop-ups, you can, you know, uh, get all of these windows out, like the alphas and everything. And we have the paint objects here. If you click them, then it will bring up this window and, you know, you can scale it and dock it to wherever you want or maybe you cannot scale it because uh, because fuck me that's why and then there it goes the other stuff you can uh, unhide and hide parts of the geometry just as you have it in uh, 3ds max and also the name is the same so it's pretty useful also to use this uh, here we have the alphas and the brushes that we can use uh, Maybe I'll, I will include them in the Gumroad thing, I'm not sure, but we will see. You can change them like clicky clicky, that's it. And then you can add new ones from Photoshop if you want to. Uh, here is the texture view, so let's paint something quickly. This is the brush, so if you click the brush and select one of the alphas, then you can paint. And then it will uh, show up here, because this is the flat texture view. Uh, let's go down here we have the layers you can also open them up so if I were to uh, duck this here maybe accidentally then we can go here and hit layer pull it here and there we go there we go we have it again <clears throat> of course we have the same um, blending options as in Photoshop so use them as uh, you would otherwise. Here the other tools of course, layer, delete and delete and create new ones. I have them on shortcuts as you can see. Uh, so moving on. Here we have uh, the brush tool of course the main thing I use just using the brush strokes and uh, that's it basically. <laughs> 
that's the main thing you want to use uh, here. Let's talk about symmetry first. You can go to the symmetry panel, open up the symmetry, and there you can check this or this or all of them at once if you are crazy. And then, you know, you can just paint symmetrically from now on onto the model. That's uh, also pretty useful. And uh, you can turn off the symmetry plane. Let's say that I painted something here Oops. and I forgot to uh, turn on my, my symmetry. So if I want to copy this over to the other side I can go to this tool, the clone stamp or whatever it's called and switch it to symmetrical copy. I turn on symmetry again and uh, demonstrate the power of this tool by you know copying what I did here to the other side. So, whoops, again, forgot it, and now it's not working. Oh, that's working. <laughs> so, there it is. Uh, that's one thing I use if I forgot to, you know, paint symmetrically. Mm. And of course, you have the eraser, I have it on shortcut as well. The way you set up shortcuts is pretty easy. Let's go here. And if you, you know, uh, hit delete or maybe backspace or something. So, yeah, if you go to the eraser and press end on your keyboard, then you can press any key to, you know, uh, define as hotkey so uh, I'm not even sure what I'm using for mm, eraser maybe this yeah. yep the Q <laughs> I forgot what I use for eraser but whatever you can just uh, apply new shortcuts to anything you want to by pressing end to define a new hotkey hovering over the tool and, you know, uh, giving it a new hotkey. Also, here in the pop-ups or in the Windows menu, you have sliders. And there you can attach mm, shortcuts to increasing the brush radius or decreasing it. You know, A and D, I have it on shortcut. If I hit D, then it will become bigger. Then if I hit A, then it becomes smaller. Uh, of course, the color picker here, you can pick colors um, from wherever you click. But if I go to the windows and pop-ups and select color, color palette, then we'll, it will open up the reference window. And there we have the reference. You can click, uh, add new one if you hit select and you know select this one and pick colors from it pretty quickly. <clears throat> so that's that and also you have this eyeball thing which will hide the uh, geometry element that you double click on so if I double click on the chest it will you know hide it or this or this and you can unhide it by hitting ctrl x on the keyboard uh, and there it is um, so let's see what I forgot to talk about. Uh, yeah, let's say I have a. Oops. Let's say I paint something on the eye here. And, you know, I want to make the eye bigger. I can do that by like going back to 3ds Max and, you know, selecting our eyeballs, scaling them up, select the whole thing again export it to the tutorial OBJ and then coming back to 3D code you can hit import replace geometry and that will replace our current working geometry uh, let's make sure we have the same texture uh, size as we set up uh, the first time and it will just you know replace the geometry quickly um, and you can continue painting uh, the beautiful eyeball and there we have it 
uh, next level stuff if you ask me <clears throat> and also let's see what I'm missing here yes you can hit uh, edit projection in external editor and that will export what you have into uh, Photoshop and then let's say I oops let's say I paint something here and here and here and then I hit control save control s on the keyboard wait a little bit a bit more and then uh, 3d code will bring in our uh, projected uh, thing into 3d code yep there you go what we painted in uh, Photoshop also you can use project through that means that it will shoot what you're painting on this side over to the other so that's useful too and we can also edit the texture uh, in uh, Photoshop by hitting Ctrl P so that will bring our texture into into Photoshop there we can use our own tools there as you can see here is the wireframe I can put it on top and we cannot see anything because it's uh, gray but you know you can change the blending option of it and there it is and if I play and paint something here uh, let's use a different color and hit Control S on the keyboard then it will uh, bring it in quickly there we go um, yes did I forget anything yes here in view you can turn on flat shade this is what I use during uh, the time-lapse video because I don't want to see the shading on the character I'm just you know painting flatly on a, on a flat texture so there we go no shading just the flat diffuse um, also here if you start painting the yellow circle is constantly there but if you hit caps lock on your keyboard then it will uh, hide when you start painting on top of the model <coughs> uh, and there is also here you can if you click the camera here you can rotate around last draw point that's pretty useful if you click that then you know it will uh, set the pivot point of the rotation uh, to that because otherwise it will you know uh, sometimes go rotate around in a weird way but if I go up here then it will you know just stick to that point it's pretty useful I'm using that also and one more thing is uh, here in the preferences you can edit uh, the viewport I mean the theme mm, and you can change the color to whatever you want uh, the top and the bottom background color you know you can just change it as you wish and there we go uh, very beautiful I think it's my masterpiece so far I will become rich and famous with this uh, image I hope you guys learned something from this video but, but basically mm, these are all the tools that I use from 3d code you will not see me use any other tools in the time-lapse video uh, this is a pretty basic use of 3d code I know because there are a bunch of things you can experiment with like you know baking uh, occlusion and everything like that but these are the only things that I used during this during this project <coughs> and I hope you will join me in the next video uh, see you guys there